Well, Ross, you made the point last week that prices were going to be high if you made a deal before the deadline, that you'd be paying a premium. Once you got closer to six o'clock, what were some of the prices for some of the starting arms and bullpen arms out there on the market? Yeah, it's interesting. It's always, it's, it's hard to talk about them generally uh, because it's different in every aspect of the market. And, and I think uh, like any other deal, there's going to have to be uh, some areas of getting uncomfortable for, for both sides to get, to get something done. And, you know, parting ways with players as talented as Nick Frasso and Jordan Gros Groshans is very difficult for us to do. Uh, but we're exceptionally excited about the group that we have added to an already very good team to to make the acquisitions of Mitch White and Whit Merrifield and Zach Pop is is exceptionally exciting for us and Anthony Bass as well. Is that enough from a starting standpoint? Like with your rotation the way it is now, in your mind, is this enough yeah. to make a push for October? Well, we've had our starting pitching has been a clear strength for us all year. I think if you just look across all the entire game our starting pitching is a clear strength that has been very effective um, you know the loss of Ryu was a hit and, and Ross Stripling stepped right in the bounce back of Yusei Kikuchi is exceptionally exciting for us and then to add Mitch White to that group is a very good compliment uh, to an already young core um, obviously Alec Manoa has been phenomenal uh, but again to add you know, Mitch White to that group to add to our bullpen and Anthony Bass and Zach Pop uh, is very exciting for us. Juan Soto was the name. Juan Soto was the name that everybody was after. How deep, if at all, did conversations get on the Soto front? You know, getting into the discussions, we'll be here all day. We could pick the next player to talk about how, how far we were on discussions, but uh, there wasn't a market uh, that we weren't in. And what, like, but was Soto a priority? I think a lot of Blue Jay fans are just wondering, you know, how much interest was there from Toronto's side on Soto? Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't be in the game and not have interest in that player. And uh, you know, it was our responsibility to exhaust it, and, and we did. You said on your Zoom call, you said we're a better team than we were prior to the deadline. What do you see this team now being for the next two and a half months? It's not just the two and a half months, you know, for us, it's the next several years that we already have a, a very good core that uh, we've worked hard to create continuity and to keep a young group together. And now we've added another group to that young core that uh, we hope can be a part of this group for more than a year or two to come. Um, so we've seen the power of that. We've seen the power of a group growing and, and developing together and now winning together and, and wanted to build upon it waiting somewhere nate pearson and julian merriweather how much of a priority now do they become for the home stretch of this season well there's so many others i i think it's not just limited to them i our bullpen has been very good over the last month and congratulations to jordan romano for pitcher reliever of the month and you know timmy Meza, yimmy garcia uh, David Phelps, uh, Adam Simber have all been very good. So now complement that group with, with Zach Pop and Anthony Bass is, uh, looks up and it feels like a strong bullpen. And then to have depth in AAA as well is some of the recent acquisitions we made prior to uh, the, the deadline buildup and, and some of the, the, you know, the development of some of our younger players and the movement of guys like Hayden Younger and Zulueta is uh, there's there's good momentum for us that we're feeling good about. Ross, appreciate the time. Anytime, Arash. Go get some sleep. <laughs>